Hi, last week was a massive milestone for the channel. We hit 5,000 subscribers. I know it takes a lot to click on a new creator and I really appreciate every single one of you so, so much. Excuse me, hi, yeah. Hi. So I've actually run the numbers and as of today, you're at 7,122 subscribers. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. So this whole 5,000 subscribers video doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay, well, I only have 5,000 charms and I already bought all of them. So I kind of committed to doing this. All right, just doing my job. Just doing my job. So apologies if you subscribed after the 5,000 milestone. I might do a 10,000 subscriber video. So share this with your friends. Shameless plug. All right, let's talk about the design. Just scooch on over here. This is the Loewe X Howl's Moving Castle dual embellished wool coat. I believe this is from the third collaboration between Loewe and Studio Ghibli, and please do not come for me about that pronunciation. I'm sure I got one of them wrong. This coat came out in 2023, and it was $15,000. Is it not screaming to be DIY'd? I am so excited to make this, and honestly, I think I will wear this quite a bit. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah, 5,000 charms is not gonna fit on that coat. That's like a thousand charms, maybe 1,200 tops. No, it's covered in charms. That's, that's 5,000. Okay, really visualize for me though what 5,000 is. Um, I actually don't know how to picture that. Whoa, how did you do that? And she's gone. Welp. Okay, I'm gonna fit as much of these onto the coat as I can but if I really can't fit them all, I do have a backup plan. I've had this dress for about a decade and it's just not my style anymore, but the fabric is pretty strong. So I think that we give this a bit of an upgrade and then we embellish the dress. We can also do a hat, I guess. Could do a scarf, maybe just like make a necklace. We'll figure it out. So fabric. So this is what I'm thinking for the fabric. I can't tell if it's brown or green. I feel like on camera it looks green, but it also has brown going through it. It's a wool that I picked up in Japan. So whoops, first of all, this is actually a suiting weight, not a coating weight. And I didn't really think about that up until the other day. I don't know if you can see it, but if I put my hand behind it, the fabric is basically a little bit sheer. So that's not ideal, particularly for carrying the weight of all these charms. Either we use this fabric and I find myself an interfacing, possibly a wool layer as an interlining, or I find another fabric. All right, let's go. I got changed to go fabric shopping, but I thought I'd have some lunch before I go out, make sure I don't buy lunch while I'm out, you know, try to save some beans. I had my favorite sesame noodles. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, so I'm gonna get changed for a second time. Well, a third time if you include the bit from before and let's go fabric shopping. Why can't I be an adult? I just did all the washing. I'm trying to leave to go shopping and this boy won't come inside. So I gave him a treasure to get him to come inside and he took it outside to eat it, didn't he? We don't leave him outside when we go out. He's an inside dog, but for some reason he's decided to be an outside dog today, hasn't he? Alfie. Can you please come inside so that I can go? Milf, milf, I need to go shopping. You don't even care about my video. First I went to Draper's, which I think has taken first place as my favorite fabric shop. This wool cashmere blend would have been perfect in brown, but I did find an interfacing, forgot to film that, and a stretchy black fabric to match the dress. Next I went across the road to the fabric store. Normally I would get a sweeping shot of the store, but it was so busy that day, so I just skulked in like a coward. Oops, snuck a quick one in. I tried to find a suitable coat fabric here, but alas, nothing was quite right. I also got really distracted by the 50% off sale. I looked at a bunch of woolens that were not suitable for this project at all. That pink is gorgeous. Oh my God, what? Oh my God, no wonder it's 60, it's 50% off. Whoa. Like really distracted. I did eventually find this gray suiting fabric though. And after a literal hour, I finally made a decision. I'm back. I picked up interfacing. This one in particular was exactly what I wanted. I've seen it called something like a whisper weft. It's really soft and it's got these lines running through it. And that is really good for interfacing wool because this one isn't stiff at all. It holds a really nice soft drape. Rather than getting a coating weight to put behind the suiting fabric, I figured two layers of suiting fabric would make sense plus the interfacing. That will give us a pretty decent warmth for the jacket. So this is a nice neutral backing for my main fabric. The other thing I picked up was just a black stretch of viscose because I just I just assume I'm gonna need it. We are out of daylight. I am still sick from my last video. My energy levels are pretty low. I will see you tomorrow to go through the pattern. Bye. This is what 5,000 people looks like if you're all charms. Look at how many there are. 
I am so excited to work with these. They're so pretty. Look at you all. Hi, everyone. So because I really wanted that shot of all the charms laid out on the table, I now needed to sort them all into containers. While I'm doing that, though, let's look at some of the charms we'll be using. We got hollow stars, gold hollow stars, little silver stars, gold little stars. Scissors, pearls, little tiny beans, little planets, silver crescent moons, gold crescent moons, mixed pearly ones. I love these ones so much, they're so pretty. Shells. I can only get 24 of these, but I love them. Oh my god, she's still going. Actually, the silver crescent moons were leaving tarnish on my hands, so I also had to wipe all of those down with a polishing cloth. As if this wasn't all going to be time consuming enough, I also needed to put 400 pearls onto head pins so I could attach them to the coat. And I didn't even have round nose pliers, so it was super janky. This is reminding me of when I worked making costume jewelry for a company. I think I only lasted like eight to 10 months because it is hell on your hands. By the time I quit, my palms had turned yellow. Just gonna keep on trucking with this. Hopefully I get through all of these tonight. Yeah, hoping I finish things is gonna be a theme in this video. Good morning. I have absolutely no time to let my hair dry before we start filming because I need to do this pattern. I went and got it printed. I didn't consider the fact that there is a separate lining. The pattern is 55 sheets. So this is probably gonna take me the entire morning to do. Should I have gone through the pattern already? Did I even talk about what pattern I got? Oh my God, I didn't. I'm really, I'm struggling with my job today. That's the pattern. I should probably put the actual picture of the pattern up here or you know, somewhere, wherever. This pattern is from Grasser Patterns. I've used them once before for my jeans. That one was mwah, like such a good experience. Sorry, the birds are being a little bit loud. Magpies, calm down. They had photos of every step Really detailed instructions, super easy to download. This pattern that I've purchased is one of their older patterns. That's the entire instructions. It's just some text and um, it's been translated from Russian. I already had a coat pattern that I could have used, but that one was a like more of a lapel style. We look at the design. It's got a collar that buttons up at the top. And at first I was like, oh, I don't need to do that. But then I thought about it and I was like, that's kind of part of the illusion of the, the jewels dripping down. I don't think this jacket would work as well if it had a lapel. We kind of want it to be solid up here and then dripping downwards. And this pattern cost me about $3.50. So I am very happy with that. Well, except for the printing that ended up costing $11. So, I should probably stop talking and just get straight into it. We have a lot of pattern cutting to do. Oh my God, this is such a long pattern. And there's still more. Oh my gosh, I am only just realizing now how long this project took because while I was working on it, I rewatched the entirety of White Lotus, all of Superstore again, and three full seasons of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Good news, that first one has to be the lining one because it is smaller and I finished it. So that's very nice, see? Unfortunately, you might be able to tell from the shadows, this is warping like crazy. I cannot get these to line up. What happened there? I don't know. Yeah, that was really hard to do. That's why I expected it to be more like the first time I did this. So the last time I did one of these, I thought that I was gonna have a horrible time and it was super easy. And I was like, why have I put off doing these for so long? Um, this time, no, this has been terrible. I was very upset with it. I'm gonna cut this one out and then I'm gonna do the main pattern one, which I assume is quite a bit bigger because I think it's about an extra 20 pages. So let's go. This is taking all morning as predicted. The main pattern wouldn't fit in the shot, so I just skipped trying to film it. Hello? What the hell? Look how long it is! I don't know if this is user error or not. Like, there's the slightest angle happening here. Have a look at how much overlap there is there. So, like, at one point, I just decided that I would match up the pieces and kind of ignore the rest because something seems to be off. Because have a look at this one. I don't understand. This fits. Yeah, this one here. These line up here. But then that doesn't line up. And then we keep going, oh, and it gets worse. Oh, and it gets worse. Until here, it was off massively. And so I had to like move it down. So like, I don't know which is correct. I tried my best. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna have lunch. We're gonna hope I have enough calico. That took so much of the day. Come look at these pattern pieces. I don't understand. Is this? Like, I don't think it's a dart. I thought maybe it was the green line. Look, 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 look here. These two lines are not meant to line up. Those dots are meant to be there in between, which means, is that the side seam? Is Maybe there's no side seam and it's just showing you that this is the side. Also, where's the rest of that text gone? 
I don't understand this pattern. And my pimples are coming in strong. We're just gonna try and not look at my nose because I'm looking a little bit like Rudolph today. So uh, I'm gonna get the calico out and we're gonna cut out a toile. Not of all the pieces. We don't need all of them. It's just for a general fit. So let's, let's go. Hello. Oh, is it the spot? Is it the spot right on the pattern? Hi. A little while ago, I saw a video that was suggesting you try cuddling your young children until they let go and they will probably hug you for a lot longer than you expect. So I decided to start doing this with Alf and they were not wrong. And how scary is my posture? So I think for this first mock-up, I think I'm gonna skip the collars. The back seems a lot shorter than the front. That's probably not good. I don't know, now it seems longer. Oh, I don't know. Alf wanted even more pats, but I'm beginning to think it was actually because the heater was on right there. Then he wanted a treat because he had gotten pats and he seems to think of it as doing a favor for me. Those are all cut out. I'm gonna get to sewing them. I was gonna have a snack because I'm heading out for dinner tonight with Thomas and one of my brothers. And I thought it'd be smart to have a snack before I go because otherwise I might get hangry. But I'm actually gonna go meet Thomas for a drink beforehand, which means I'm gonna get some hot chips. So I don't need to have a snack. So for now, let's sew these darts on the back and sew the center seam on this one. Give me a cheers. No. <laughs> Remember that fabric that I was distracted by? I couldn't stop thinking about it, so I went back. I mean, who can pass up 50% off wool? I'm not made of stone. I stocked up on fabrics for future projects. I made up a project to fit the wool and I had to dig for it, but I also found our lining fabric. I decided to go with green and just like lean into the green of the coat. Okay, we're back. I've made an executive decision, okay? Let's skip to the fun stuff. Twelve. It got so dark while I was filming this. I really struggled with the arm size here. There's too much fabric here. I know you do ease stitching, but it just seems like it's a bit too much. And one of the notches wouldn't line up, even though the others did. These darts also look really long on the front. But anyway, let's go try it on. Kind of feels like a science or medical gown. But yeah, it's got this weird like draping forwards thing. I think that this has too much room in the bust as most patterns do. I mean, mine wants to open up at the bottom. See, why, why, why? But I don't know how to fix that. I'm now just wondering about the wisdom of making a toile if I don't know how to correct any of the fit issues. I just tried on a different coat that I own and it doesn't have darts and it sits completely fine. And I just feel really weird about these darts. So I have like the vaguest idea of how I am going to maybe remake this pattern piece without the dart there. I'm gonna, we'll see, we'll see. And I also actually think that I would like the sleeves just to be a little bit wider so I can fit jumpers under it. Yeah, they're just, the, the dart is annoying me. So let's, let's have a look. Maybe. I went with the rather bold move of cutting up the original pattern when I was basing these alterations, I think on a photo I saw on Pinterest one time that had absolutely no context. But that's how I went about removing the dart and that's what we're sticking with. I have attempted to remove the dart. It might make the fit even weirder, but basically I'm just gonna attempt to unpick what's already sewn on and just try and sew this in. It's unpicking time. Hang on, I'll just finish this chip first, hang on. I'm still finishing the chip. Oh my gosh, look how much better it is sitting. It is shorter here because I just couldn't be bothered getting the, the length right. It's sitting straight now, like the actual coat. Look at the difference. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that worked because here's what I realized while I was out walking out. I should have just bought a men's coat pattern. So seeing as we've had that great success, I'm gonna have a go with the sleeve now and just make that a little bit wider as well and possibly a little bit narrower at the top. So happy. Again, I don't know where in my mind palace this was, but I cut the sleeve piece down the middle, overlapped the top slightly where I wanted to reduce the shoulder and widened the hem area. <gasps> Looks good. I forgot the sleeve has two parts, so I have to increase the length of that one as well, but they're like, whatever. I'm so happy with these alterations. I'm really surprised that they worked and I'm really excited to cut this out in the real fabric tomorrow. So many layers of fabric. We've got interfacing, actual fabric, interlining, and lining. And I have to remember to alter the lining pieces as well. Damn it! Okay, all right. Well, look, there's a few things we have to do, but I'm really excited for it. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Good morning. I had a little look at the pattern pieces this morning and I have realized that there are a few more changes I need to make because our lining pattern has side seams, but our jacket has a side panel. And because I changed the front piece of the jacket, I also need to change 
the lining and facing pieces, I think. I'm gonna disregard this entire piece because it's so weird. Particularly, it's got this huge dart thing that creates that bust shape that I don't want. So I'm going to remake this pattern piece. This is my front pattern piece. This is the facing piece that's provided with the pattern. And so all that we need to do now, you see here, this is where the side seam would actually be. And this is where the seam ends on this piece. So I need to create a piece that bridges the gap between this and this. I don't know how, but some of the pieces were way off lengthwise, so I had to fix that first. This pattern seemed so simple to me in theory, but in practice it was hands down the dodgiest pattern I have ever made. I kind of laid every pattern piece on top of each other and then did no better than guess where the edges of the lining piece should be. For the sleeves, I just made the exact same changes to the lining as the main pieces and hoped for the best. Let's go. I didn't pre-wash any of this fabric, but that's because it's pretty much all wool. Well, it's not all wool, but two layers of wool. And I didn't grab the care instructions for them. And so I don't know if they're machine washable and I have a pretty strong feeling that they're not. So I am probably only ever gonna dry clean this. And now that I think about it, I don't think a dry cleaner could deal with this because of all the charms on it. So the coat can never be washed. We'll do what the ballerinas do, apparently, and just spray the underarms with vodka every now and then. I am really proud of myself. I remember to put the three pieces that need to be on the fold on the fold. And I even checked how many pieces I need to cut out of everything. This is big progress for me. So because this fabric, well not this fabric, because that fabric isn't so much of a tight weave, I'm going to interface every one of the pieces. So I need to cut them all out again. Let's make this quicker. Okay, that was a garbage transition because I didn't realize that the uh, camera wasn't in a great spot. Let's try again. Yeah. Okay, one more to go. Okay, yeah, so this pocket, uh, I didn't take a look at it before I got to the point of cutting it out and I realized that it's one of those crappy pockets. I put a phone in there. So yeah, I made this silly ass long pocket that was as silly as. All right, next step, ironing on all the interfacing pieces for every piece of this pattern. I'm so tired. That's all the pieces to the coat. Good morning, hi, I probably should have said hi. Good morning. Man, I hope that pattern paper weighs a lot because this is hefty. Why do I keep making such heavy projects? But we're ready to start construction. The first step was preparing some horsehair canvas to help shape the collar. I'm just following some of the steps in my favorite little tailoring book and I've actually only done this one time before and that time I hand stitched it and I never finished that coat. The coat that I never finished. Well, I forgot to press play when I was doing that, but basically I have trimmed off all of the seam allowances on this so that we don't catch that bulk in the seams when we turn these over. Cool? Cool. Also, all the stitching is done on the under collar. Oh my god, I did it again. I didn't record it. All right, well there, I've marked some lines. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with me today. I sat down to do this and then was like, oh, I'll just go grab my tiny scissors from the lounge room. And uh, then I went and changed the sheets. I'm doing my best. Look at him in his little jacket, looks so cute. I steamed the collar into position and left it to set. Now that the collar is doing its thing, I think it's now time for me to really explain how vague these instructions are. I love grasser patterns. It's just, this is an old one. So it's just, it's a little hard if you haven't actually made one of these coats before. Process the middle seam of the back, I understand that. Process the entrance of the pockets using facing. What do I do with this? Sew on pocket facing to facings. I don't know how these pockets work. I'm okay. The pockets are going to probably be an after lunch thing. Once my brain's a little more in gear, we're just going to do it one step at a time and it's going to make sense. And honestly, we kind of need to get through this because we've got so much stuff to make for this video. We have so much hand sewing to do and I'm so excited about it. I am going to be so Zen mm. just hand sewing for like five days straight. Can't wait. So I'm going to stop procrastinating and just go do it. I sewed the darts individually on the back interlining and main fabric pieces and then pinned the interlining to the fabric pieces before pinning the back seam together. Does that make sense? This is a lot of work. Oh boy, that's thick. Can you see how thick that is? This is definitely an example of me making things more complicated than they need to be, but it was actually worth it in the end this time. I'm gonna press it, I'm gonna have some lunch, and then we're gonna try and figure out what's next because that was as far as I got with understanding the instructions. 
Ooh, this is a clapper. My dad made this one for me. It's so handy when ironing seams. It helps trap the steam. Oh, and in lieu of any footage of my lunch, please enjoy this wine glass stealing Kira Knightley's nose. I had lunch. I think I can trick myself into thinking my brain's working better now. Okay, these pattern pieces for the pocket facings had me really perplexed, just to continue with the alliteration there. Maybe this longer bit here goes into the seam panel, the panel seam. Okay, bear with me. I've got my front and side panel, so I'm going to, what am I gonna do? I just let you in, but you wanna go out again. It is, it is nice and sunny. There you go. I just don't want flies getting in. Why are you coming back in? Did you just need to check that outside was still outside? I know I didn't explain what I was doing with these pocket facings earlier, but honestly, I'm not sure I can explain it any better now. I figured out how to do it by looking at a coat I already own and that had kind of similar pocket facings. I worked out that I would need to construct the facings, then sandwich them between the pocket and the coat panels, but not until I had already sewed the pocket on and then had to unpick it when I realized my mistake. Oh my God, look at it. I did it. Can you even? Can you, can you even see it actually? Can you see it? I'm gonna hand stitch it down here and here and then we have a facing for the pocket. I'm gonna press those and I'm gonna figure out what's next. And I'm probably going to have some pistachio paste. That's right, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, maybe I want a coffee. Afternoon pick me up idea. Dollop of double cream and a dollop of pistachio paste. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if this is gonna be any good, but. My heart says yes. I mean, it looks disgusting to be honest, but like, actually I don't even like dairy with coffee. Why did I do that? It's pretty good, but to be honest, I think what I wanted was a coffee and gelati. I know I already said it. I think I already said it. I can't express how happy I am that I figured out these pockets. Next, it is sew the side seams to the back, put the shoulder seams in and then do the sleeves. I can't believe it might actually start looking like a coat before the end of the day. Maybe let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's turn this into a coat. Well, okay, it's not exactly a coat yet, but we got some more seams done. Yeah, I gotta say some of these, pretty messy. Uh, that one's fine. This one, not so much, gets pretty thin there. Let's not worry about it. It seems to be sitting okay. Do you get it, seams? Never mind. let's sew some sleeves. So because of all the layers of fabric in these seams, I sometimes had to sew in little sections to prevent the top layer from puckering. I have sleeves, I have coat. I really wanna do a cool transition for this, but it also might be helpful for you to see how I put the sleeves in. I'm gonna give it a go. Oh, well, I've ruined the transition by putting the fire on. We got sleeves. This is so satisfying to do. All these pieces coming together to make a coat that you can barely see because of the lighting. We have a very cute little collar. I stitched the upper collar to the under collar, starting from the center and sewing outwards to try to prevent all the layers from moving too much. We just need to attach the center of this to the center of that. I'm sure that was very clear for you. It makes a lot of sense. How's my posture? Is that good? Because it feels good. It feels really, ow, I stabbed myself. It feels really good. All right, I didn't get the center. I need to sit down. I'm hurting my back. I knew that just pins wouldn't be secure enough for attaching this collar, so I hand tacked it in place. I just waved at the camera while it wasn't recording. There you go. I think this is right. This is the facings. I think I'm gonna sew them together first and then try to attach them into the jacket and collar. It was correct, except that I had forgotten the interlining, so I had to unpick it and redo it. And once again, I turned on the camera, but forgot to turn on the mic. I didn't turn the mic on. Good morning. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I can't, I'm not good at whispering. Um, hi, good morning. I'm still whispering. I'm trying to be quiet because Thomas is still asleep but I really want to get an early start on this coat. It's time to put the facings on. And then when that's done, we do, I guess, buttonholes and buttons and hand stitch those facings down for the pockets. And then it's time for embellishments. So let's just get into it. Sorry, I made this weird by whispering. I'm gonna keep doing it. Once I pinned the facings in place, I hand tacked the upper collar to the facings. Then I was apparently fascinated by the lampshade behind me, kind of looking like a hat and I had learned nothing and had forgotten to turn the mic on again. It's not like there was any music playing though. I was just jiving to something in my head, I guess. Seriously though, at what point does this stop being funny? Because guess what? I just tried to record this voiceover and I forgot to turn the mic on. Look at it. Well, you can't really look at it because it's just all flopping around. Let's get it on the mannequin. Look how well it's sitting. You can't see, you're too far away. Okay, hang on. Look at how well it's sitting. I wanted to keep the shape of the collar and coat edges in place while I worked on the embellishments, so I tacked along those lines. 
So these are just some buttons that I have taken off of a military jacket at one point. So they actually blend in with the jacket really well because it turns out it's kind of green. And then for the top button, I have this little like military one. I'm just gonna do a different one for the top because I think it's cute. Finally time to sew buttonholes on. I have a thread that pretty much blends in with the fabric. So my plan is, even if they're really messy, you won't be able to see it. And if they're really, really messy, I just wanna show you them. All right, to be honest, I'm going to sew some of these buttonholes. And then once my technique is a little bit better as we get towards the end, then I will show you the making of the buttonhole. Cool? So yeah, I'll see you in a bit and it will actually not seem like there's been any sort of a break whatsoever. So let's, let's just do that. Why do I ruin it by talking about it? I wanted to show you the making of the buttonhole, but I was pretty much finished by the time I realized that the lighting was too dim and I don't know how to explain how they're done anyway. So here is a list of things I wanted to look up while editing this video, but resisted. How much chicken costs at KFC? What the pink cupcake from the movie Major Pain looked like? I kind of want to make it. Is Les Miserables a book or just a play? Why does gelati taste better than ice cream? I'm realizing most of these are food themed. Remember how I said it would be like no time had passed because I was just gonna do the buttons? So much time has passed. That took nearly all day. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a thunderstorm happening. I haven't even done the facings yet. I really, really thought we'd be sewing embellishments on by like 11 a.m. and it's like four now. Why did that take so long? Why am I so bad at estimating time? Unrelated to this, Thomas has requested a giant cinnamon roll cake for him to bring to his work morning tea tomorrow. So I'm gonna go do that. And then it will be time for embellishments. Did you see the light flicker? And it's kind of loud. I'm gonna sew these facings on and I'm gonna bake a cake. I have shocking news and you are not going to believe this, but this part's taking longer to sew than I thought it would. She sunk in the middle, but she's still beautiful. I'm so annoyed actually that I don't get to eat this. I should have made two. Finally, the buttons, buttonholes and facings are done. It is finally time to start the embellishments. Hey, I'm back. Oh good, she's back. That's what I said. It's been like a week. Why are you wearing the same outfit? I'm a character. This helps the audience understand what's going on. Okay, you've been here for like a minute, so let's not go breaking the fourth wall just yet. Oh, can I just do my job? Oh yeah, sorry, what's up? So I ran the numbers and I have good news. Great, if it only takes you 30 seconds to select, position, sew on and tie off a single charm, which it won't, it's very unlikely. It will only take you 41 hours and 40 minutes of straight sewing to attach all 5,000 charms. How is that good news? You love hand sewing. I do. You know me so well. That's because we're the same person. Oh, this fourth wall. All right, bye. See you at the Christmas party. She's fun, I promise. All right, let's do this. Eh, it took so long to film all that. That's gone cold. I wanted to start with a nice shot of all the charms laid out. Then I kicked off the timer. But you might notice something a bit off about this footage. You see, I thought that getting a shot of the charms in slow motion would be a good idea, but I forgot to change it back. Now I have two cameras and my backup I mostly use for time lapses. So in general, all of the footage for this first day is in eight times speed or slow motion. So here are some highlights. Here is when I realized that after one hour, I had only sewn on 52 charms and therefore we had to revise the estimate up to 83 hours of hand sewing. Yay. Here are some alf pats. Uh, I think this is me asking why am I like this? Here's some more time lapse. Oh, here is me having some spicy creamy tokboki for lunch because I didn't already feel sick enough from that huge toasted cheese sandwich. I'm not good with spice or creamy. Here's alf in the sun, more time lapse. Oh, here's me snacking on some cake and a cup of tea. It tastes better from a pot I have discovered. Here's me realizing that I'm not recording any audio and here is the actual moment I realized that everything I've filmed today has been in slow motion. Wait has everything I've recorded today been in slow motion? Oh no. I didn't even end up using that slow motion footage of the charms. Well it's 10 p.m. I have recorded every time I was sewing so we did seven hours so I paused it whenever I took a break or if, if I just got up from my desk for any reason I paused it so that's a little concerning that it's only seven hours worth even though I've been at this all day so I'll show you where we're at the back's looking pretty good I think but yeah not bad progress for today the only problem is there's barely a dent in these charms I will see you tomorrow for too many embellishments 
I realized I needed to finish the sleeves and hem before I could place all the charms. I also needed to hem the facing, which I could not figure out with the machine, so I just hand sewed it. I catch stitched the hems in place by only sewing them to the interlining layer. It's very counterintuitive to do. You sort of sew forwards while going backwards. This technique for hemming was also from my handy dandy tailoring book. I don't know what I'm doing. I was struggling a bit with the height of my mannequin because it's missing a piece, so it just slides down too low. So I tried putting up on the table and... I don't think that helps. So I tried wrapping the pole in tape to give it some grip. I've made it worse and now I think I'm just gonna have to live with her being this height. I changed up the charm placement technique a bit and started spacing out the charms I had the fewest of. There were a few designs I only had about 30 pieces of and they were usually larger too. Then I just proceeded with sewing charms on for the rest of the day. It's about 5 p.m. The hemming took me like three or four hours this morning because it took me a really long time to figure out the positioning and get it to sit straight. So we're at now 10 hours of sewing charms on. Here's the thing. I think I messed up. 10 hours in, I'm thinking at most 400 charms have gone on. There's no change to these containers. Look, look, look. Cool. Yeah. Lots. So many. I still have this bag. Why did I keep this separate? We're just going to tip these in. Nearly overflowing. All right. That's what's left. There's not that much room on this coat. I was hoping to finish this in the next couple of days. That was insane. I, I don't even know what to learn from this for the future. And this is so many. It's real pretty though. Don't let me do this again, okay? Please let me know what other things I should do to celebrate subscriber milestones because it can't be sewing charms onto something, all right? Like I need to finish this before I die. We're starting to see the bottom of the container in some of these. Isn't that exciting? I mean, mostly there's still so many. I'm calling it on day three of sewing charms on. We are at 19 and a half hours and I need to figure out how to lower that mannequin because my arms hurt from reaching up too high. Hopefully, See you tomorrow for finishing up the charms on the coat. Uh, and then I guess we sew charms on other things. I don't, I don't know where to stand for the light to be good. All right, good night. I kind of want to explain why this took so long. These sew-on crystals in particular have four holes in the back and they need to be sewn on really securely or they'll sit weird. The thread also catches on the other crystals and charms all the time. And even the simple ones like the stars, I still pass the thread through multiple times and tied the thread off, even if I wasn't cutting the thread between charms. Otherwise they might pull weirdly on the fabric. That's the last one. I'm calling it there on the coat, all right? I have been sewing charms on for 21 hours and 45 minutes at a minimum. That is the absolute minimum because I kept forgetting to restart the timer when I started sewing. That's, I guess in a sense, doesn't sound so bad until you look at how many charms I have left. Terrifying. Let's weigh them. Oh my God. I've used less than a quarter of the charms. The coat is probably like 1100 charms. Oh my God. I have to step this up really quickly. So all that's left on the coat now is putting in the lining. Uh, that's terrifying and I don't want to think about it. Let's talk about the dress. <laughs> this project's just going to keep going. It's never going to end. I don't know where, to, how do I? So this is the dress that we're working with. It's a party dress. I don't go to parties. So I purchased this black stretchy fabric and uh, I didn't pre-wash it and I was handling it just before and my hands turned completely black, which means we can't start draping with this yet. We need to wash it first and then I need to wait for it to dry. So I'm gonna go wash this. Then we're going to get that dress onto the mannequin, start sewing some charms on. I fixed my mannequin by the way. Found this thing so that this is adjustable now. Anyway, I had initially planned to add sleeves and a cute little floofy skirt, but I am also considering maybe making it a a long skirt adding a split and then that way I can smatter stars and stuff all the way down but I want to start really dense at the top here like super dense and then drip downwards is the plan because we need to use these charms <laughs> I looked at the charms and I got overwhelmed again so let's see how densely we can do this cookie delivery mm. Thanks, baby. Were you giving me the rest of this? Good job. Remember how at the start of this, I said that I only had 5,000 charms. That was actually a lie. I have around about six and a half thousand. And the reason for that is twofold. When I did my last subscriber celebration video, I actually ran out of flowers. I didn't have enough because some of them didn't arrive and I did not want that to happen again. Alfie, thank you. He's just sniffing near me. Uh, and the other one was that I hadn't actually picked the design when I ordered the charms. And so it wasn't until I saw the coat later on that I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. And I bought all the colored charms. 
from this point on, no promises is gonna look good. The coat, the coat is nice. Everything else, we just need to get these charms onto something. No, not because I finished them, I consolidated. Here's the plan. I'm gonna fit all of the charms onto this dress. This whole section up the top here, we're doing solid as. We are going to drape a floor length skirt with a split. I have to sneeze. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we're working with so far. We have a plan. I'm going to make it work, okay? I have decided and the charms will bend to my will. I will not be beaten by this. I have some kind of a circle skirt pattern. There's room. I just kind of use this as a guide and I also cut a train into it so I would have some extra real estate. Oh my God, amazing. No one's gonna notice that it's brown thread. Please work. Please just work on the first try. Please don't snag the fabric. The thread broke and got tangled in the machine. And the thread kept breaking and getting tangled and I don't know why. I don't usually work with knit fabrics and I'll be honest, this was not a great way of doing this. The skirt sits kind of weird, but we're just gonna live with it. Got a croissant. Ah, hit my tooth. Does he wanna play? Whoops. Hello. It is very much bedtime. It's nearly 10 o'clock. We're at 41 hours and 15 minutes of sewing charms on. She's looking really full. I just want you to know that as I go to sleep every night, I'm still doing this. I'm just sewing in my head. Let's do like an easy video next, maybe. Let's, I'll take suggestions for something that's really easy. I opened my door for like a second and some terrifying beetle thing with lots of body parts and legs and wings flew in and it's stuck in my window. Where did it go? It was in the window. Now I just have to leave this open and hope that more bugs don't come in. It left. Ha ha. My thumbnail keeps catching in all of the prongs of the little like clawed crystals. So that's nice. This is the one that catches the needle and I keep catching it on that nail. And also I've done it again. I did not buy a thimble as instructed by many of my subscribers. So sorry. I don't think I even like the dress. Does this not look like something that Taylor Swift would wear and Luke Ma would rip to shreds for just being Boring. It feels like something that would get roasted on Hortler mode. Why? Good morning. I am wearing fun makeup today because we are excited, because we are nearly finished. We are so close to finishing the dress. Even though we are wearing fun makeup, I'm out of clean clothes. I haven't done any washing. We don't have any food in the house. Alf is confused as to why I never leave that spot at the table. The other reason we are excited is this weekend is mine and Tom's one year wedding anniversary. So I really want to wear the coat to that. It's still freezing in Melbourne. I have a green jumpsuit that I want to wear out and this is going to go so well with that. So let's get the lining in and get that coat finished. And then we're going to do our last little bit of sewing charms on. And I might even move to the couch for that because I haven't sat on the couch in like over a week. This may be the most excited I've been for something I have made on this channel in terms of it's fashion, but it's wearable. I mean, like I love my witch costume and stuff, but like, where am I gonna wear that to? Oh, also fun fact. If you watched my sewing room makeover video, uh, you remember that I wanted to stay in the table? Well, guess what? I spilt my coffee, so. Technically, it is stained. I just remembered that I've really guessed the pattern of the lining. And so here's the thing. I don't know how well it's gonna fit into the coat. We're gonna shove it in. And we're gonna hopefully get this done today. No, we are gonna get it done today. We're just hopefully gonna get it done neatly today. What happened? Oh, <laughs> it did it again. I had the bobbin in the wrong way that whole time. Yes, I know it looks very big. That's fine. We're gonna put a big old plate here and we're just gonna smoosh it in. Let's do these sleeves. Great. Sleeves. We're gonna machine stitch all along this seam here, going around the neck into the facings. And then we're going to hand stitch the hem of the sleeves 
and <laughs> this little messy hem as well. Oh my God, how is this gonna work? This should match the shoulder seam. Okay, round two of things that I wanted to look up while I was editing this video is Muna Turing. Did Florence Pugh grow her hair out and is the new Kristen Bell movie worth watching? Let's hope that I included enough ease in this that this just flips out the right way and the sleeves and everything makes sense. Also, is it Kristen or Kirsten? Because I always mess those up. Oh, it kind of makes me think of like chocolate and pistachio gelati, but I think everything makes me think of gelati. This is looking lovely. And now it is time to hem the bottom of this and I am basing it entirely on this image here. We are nearly 40 minutes into the video and so it is time for me to remind you if you're enjoying the video, please give it a like. Also, I wanna remind you to have a drink of water. Chances are you're probably dehydrated. Also, also, I was so excited to finally sit on the couch again. Honestly, I had the best time doing this. Seeing as I was finally free of my studio, I wanted to keep that going while I finished sewing the charms onto the skirt, but it was actually super awkward. So I moved back to the studio in the dress form to finish that up. As a final step on the coat, I removed those tacking stitches. Yes, I filmed this on my phone. My camera was in the lounge and I didn't want to wake up Alf. The coat, completely finished. The dress, finished. As many charms as I can possibly put on it, it's really hard to sew on the skirt because that fabric is so flimsy. So I fit even more into the bodice and now there is no more room. And I have a confession to make. What is this? There's still more charms, like a lot more. 5,000 is so many. I did not expect to make that evening dress. I didn't, that wasn't in my plan. I was just gonna make a coat and maybe some other little things. So this has been so much. So I'm making bracelets today. We're just gonna get all the charms into something. We're gonna get it done, okay? Look at how long this is. It's so heavy. It's stuck. I know that this has been a very rambling, weird sort of video without the strongest of structure. We got there in the end. So I just wanna say a final thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed, everyone who watches and comments and shares. Thanks for hanging out on this very weird meandering journey of charms and trying to conceptualize what 5,000 is. Probably not gonna do any more milestone videos like this. If you have any suggestions for things I could do to celebrate subscriber milestones that don't involve making stuff, that would be awesome. Let me know what you'd like. We could do like an AMA. Uh, I can eat food blindfolded. I don't know, you let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me do. I think with that, let's head into the reveal. We did it, we did it. I'm not gonna cry, I've cried already. <laughs>